वर्णिवेशमणीयदर्शन मंदहासुचिराननाबुज पूजित सुरनरोतमेर्मुदा धर्मनंदनमहम विचित श्रीहरिकृष्ण महाराज नीज ऑलमाइटी सुप्रीम गॉड भगवान स्वामीनारायण पूज्य गुरु जी हाल सतो एन डी ओ टी जय स्वामीनारायण वन बिकम अ ड्यूटी ऑफ भगवान स्वामीनारायण आफ्टर अटेनिंग दिस डिवाइन सत्संग इवन दो वी हैव सो मेनी एंड इन वेरी डिफरेंट वेज वी हैव acquire some knowledge but still we have to remain so many things to understand today as we all know about know about the duty of god but whether we know the meaning of devotion whether we know what is the meaning of devotee today we are going to discuss about these things as a devotee we should know what is the meaning of devotion if we have no any spiritual knowledge then if we try to get the proper meaning of devotion and use dictionary then dictionary also shows the same meaning what the sri ji maharaj has revealed in the shiksha patri dictionary also reveals the same meaning devotion means devotion means the intense love intense love for god there are so many different meanings and definitions we have for devotion bhakti but in shiksha patri sirji maharaj given explanation and exact definition for bhakti maharaj says maharaj wrote in shiksha patri what is devotion what is bhakti intense love for god based on his glorious greatness based on the knowledge of his great glorious greatness that is devotion that is bhakti so we should have intense love for god and if we have no such love for god then how can we save ourselves how can we identify ourselves as a devotee if we have no devotion then how we are devotee so to become a devotee we have to acquire the quality of devotion this is not outer quality this is means devotion has concern with heart in vachanamrut sri ji maharaj explain the types of devotion there are nine types of devotion shravanam kirtanam vishnu smaranam pad sevanam archanam vandanam dasyam sakhyam atma nivedanam these nine types of devotion <coughs> but if we perform any kind of spiritual or religious work and sometimes even though the work is religious work is related to god but still if we have no love for god in our heart then that activity even though 
the activity is related to God, still it is not called as devotion. Sriji Maharaj has revealed so many kind of de definition of bhakti and described many other things in Vachanamrit about bhakti or devotion. Not only by preaching, Sriji Maharaj has given us the understanding of devotion, but by his own behavior, by his own divine pastimes, Maharaj has given us the exact information about devotion. When Sriji Maharaj was, li was living in Ch uh, Ayodhya in his childhood, he always used to go to the temple, used to pray before the devotee or before the deities in the temple, used to go in the company of sadhu. This is all what he liked in his childhood. In the 55 Vachnamrut, of Gita second chapter, he himself said, even when I was a child, I very much enjoyed such things as going to mandirs for darshan, listening spiritual discourses, keeping the company of sadhu and going on pilgrimage. He has no need to do such things, but for us to teach his devotee, He has given us these examples. Not only this, but at the time of Sriji Maharaj, there are so many devotees who, even at the very little age, means in childhood, renounced to playing with other kids and enjoying to play with God. Just as Jiuba and Laduba. Even though they were the they were from the royal family, but even in their childhood they did not like to play with other kids. They did not like to play with toys, but instead of doing such things wasting time to play with others. They like to play with form of God. And <clears throat> they were not just playing with God, but that is their devotion. And due to devotion, due to pure heart, pure sentiment, was there and due to their intense love for God, God himself was drinking milk from bowl uh, with the jiuba. So this is what the devotion is. Devotion does not have concern with age with monetary condition, with one's ability, I mean physical ability. Devotion does not concern with these things. If we have devotion in our heart, if we have some loving feeling in our heart for God, then God definitely accept what we offer Him. There are so many incidents in our history books even in our religious books, in our sampradaya also, there are so many devotees at the time of Bhagavan Swami Narayan. They have such intense love for God, but not for the world, not for relatives. And so God Himself accepts what they offer.
so for kids to preach the kids sri ji maharaj himself revealed his own past times of his childhood to us and teach us that how to behave in childhood how to how to try to be a devotee in childhood so used to go to temple listening spiritual discourses <coughs> go to the place of pilgrimages these are the characteristic of a good child who has devotion in his heart our pujya guru ji he has also the same past times in his childhood when he was in very first standard in school he was in he was living in his village where our mother but not like other kids he was also playing with the other kids but with different matters different manners he used to play with his friends at his early age what he did he did gather all his friends and <coughs> building a small temples with the mud stones and other materials and install the form of god merely a stone as a form of god and singing kirtans perform aarti and also offer some prasad to that god and distributed to uh, distributed to others this is what he is playing his game not like today's kids just <coughs> start computer and playing with computer game this is not his childhood his childhood was different from ours in school every saturday he was <coughs> used to say story of bhagwan swami narayan even in his very early age of 6 year so bhagwan and guru ji teaches through his own incidents how to behave or how to teach our kids to play with gods how we can try to make our children religious this is the devotion not only for kids but bhagwan has also describe the things for the youth also for youth bhagwan renounce his home and after renouncing home and relatives traveling <coughs> all over the country and perform so many harsh austerities but this is not the thing this is not concerned with devotion but the thing which concern with devotion is that bhagwan nilkanth varni keep a form of god with him even though he is the supreme personality of godhead but still he keep he kept at the time a form of god in the form of saligram and every day used to worship the form of god first offer him even water or fruits whatever he got or whatever he received from the rishis and other people he first offer all the things to bhagwan saligram and then he partake it as prasad he has no need to offer anything to saligram because he is the supreme personality of god and himself but still to preach his devotees to preachers 
he had to perform such kind of charitra so if <clears throat> we have devotion in our life our heart become melted for darshan of god we have eagerness to see a form of god if we do not feel such things in our heart then i think if we feel that i have devotion but still we have lacking of devotion puja guru ji in his early 20s he was appointed as chief administrator chief administrator chief administrative of vidyanagar chhatralay and even though he managed very skillfully but still in chaturmas and magmas he used to go vartal for the darshan of hari krishna maharaj by walking every day this is what he do, his devotion for maharaj and for all of us we have seen for kids for youth and now for all of us seji maharaj reveal so many things in vachanamrut by his own incidents he has teach us so many things for devotion and at the time of bhagwan swami narayan in satsang there are so many devotees who has such kind of love in their hearts if we have so so much wealth so much money so much property but if we have no pure love for god and if we offer all the things to god but still god do not please upon us god could not accept what we have offered him because there is lacking of pure love god does not require anything what we offer but he only require he only desire from us that is our pure love pure affection if we have affection for god and if we have nothing to offer him and if we offer only water then god definitely accept our water but if we have no love we have no room for him in your heart then how can he accept what we offer now think if we have devotion in our heart then what can be the characteristic of it if a person who has devotion in in his heart he definitely have desire for darshan of god have desire for listening katha desire to go to the temple to meet santos devotees but think if a faithful wife who has love for his husband only due to the love only due to his love for his husband he renounces his house he renounces his father and mother he didn't say renounced all his things and went to <coughs> and used to go to his husband's house because he has love for his husband <coughs> and for love he she can renounce all the things if we have love for god then we also able to renounce our bad nature or wild thoughts whatever in our life which is called inappropriate 
we can renounce if we have love for God. Then think, think for ourselves, whether I have devotion for God or not, whether I have affection for God or not. If I have affection for God, then <coughs> why inappropriate swabhav remain in my life? Now we have not fully devotion, we have not fully love for God, but if we try to acquire such quality, then how can we attain pure love for God? The answer is also given in the Vachanavrut. Bhagavan says in 58th Vachanavrut, first chapter, in the answer of Mahan Bhavanand Swami's question, Maharaj says, When a person thinking about the qualities and virtues of Sadpurus and keep a company of Sadpurus, then by beholding his good qualities in his heart, person gradually increase love and devotion for God. So if we, if we keep the company of sadhu, then we definitely one day acquire this quality of devotion. And Bhagwan says in Sikshapatri, intense love for God, based on the knowledge of His glorious greatness, that is devotion. So we have affection, no doubt, for God, but that is not intense. What is intense love? We have love for our relatives. We have love for our body. We have love for our position. We have love for our wealth, our property, our house, our car. But, and similarly we have also love for God. But we have not intense love for God. So, it is not necessary to create love because we have already love for God and we have love in our heart but we have to divert it, we have to have to gather all our vrutis from other things, our affection from other things and forcefully engage all the affection in the form of God. If we try in this way, then we definitely one day acquire full flag devotion in our heart only for the form of God. And if we have such love, pure affection for the form of God, then according to Vachanavrut, we definitely attain the highest state of spiritual world and that is Akhanvruti, constant contemplation. Among the four phase to attain constant contemplation, one of out of four that is love for God. In conclusion, there are so many things remain to acquire in our life, but if we acquire this devotion, then according to Vachanamrut, according to divine words of Maharaj, we can also be able to attain Dharma, Gnana, Vairagya, if we have Bhakti in our heart. And when we acquire these four qualities, then we will become a Kanti. <coughs> so let we start from today this is not the point to point or matter to ask from god because god has already given us the way he has all already shown us the way how to reach the level of pure devotion for god not only this but he has also given us the material 
means he has given us pure sadhu who has also the pure love for god so by the keeping of company with associated satsang we can definitely attain this level and god also one day accept what we offer him hari krishna maharaj ni je श्री पतिम श्रीधर सर्वेश्वर भक्तिधर्मात्मज वासुदेव हरे माधव केशव कामद कारण स्वामीनारायण नीलकंठ हरिकृष्ण महाराज नी जय संत कृपाए सुख उपजे संत कृपा थी सर काम संत कृपा थी पामीए पूरण पुरुषोत्तम धाम काम दुधा कल्पतरु पारस चिंता मनि चार संत समानते एक नहीं में मन मा करो विचार हरि कृष्ण महाराज नी जय Supreme, Almighty Lord Swami Narayan, Puri Bhad, Guruji, and all of you saints and devotees, my humble Jay Swami Narayan. Before I start my lecture, I had a question for you. My question is: Have you ever wondered what war is like? or what battle is like think about it the intensity the thrill the excitement the danger just think about it how thrilling it can be but there is much danger in war i don't know if you knew but there is actually a war going on inside of our head inside of our mind as of right now you probably do not know if you do know or if you do say yes then it's not the answer i'm looking for currently right now there's battles mini battles or wars going on beginning starting ending inside of our mind but we just do not know now the first question is what war or what battle is going inside my mind right now and the second question is how can i stop this this is logical no first and foremost i would want to give you an example <laughs> the example is suppose that you want to go eat outside food in indian terms lari no khao if you want to eat outside food you have a thought that occurs that i want to go eat pani puri 
outside. A thought occurs. On the other hand, another thought occurs. No. Or Dunkin' Donuts, as Swami says. Anything. Pizza, Dunkin' Donuts, anything. But another thought occurs that I am a devotee of Bhagwan. I cannot eat outside food. Is that correct? A second thought does occur. Everyone who comes to a temple or who practices religion, these two thoughts occur. Another example, suppose you want to go watch a movie outside in theater with your friends. A thought occurs that, oh, this new movie has come out. Let's go watch it. That's one thought. On the other hand, another thought occurs. Sri Ji Swami has called me to come to temple today. So, I should obey Swami's command. Now, these two thoughts start to fight with one another. Whose force is stronger? Swami's or the other thought that I want to go watch movie. Okay? Now, this is the war that's occurring. The second question is, how can we stop this war? Or first, who wants to stop this war? That's a question. Would you like to stop this battle that is going on where one thought is fighting with the other thought? Of course everyone would. Because it is disturbing us from doing devotion of Bhagwan. Now, Sriji Maharaj has the perfect Vachnamrut. Kadada, first chapter, 70th Vachnamrut. Kakabai's question is the Vachnamrut name. That Bhagwan will give us the Bhagwan will give us the perfect medicine, perfect cure in order to stop this battle from occurring. So let's read a couple points from the Vachramrut and then analyze to understand it more. So Kakabai of the village of Rojka asked Nityanand Swami, deep within one's heart, something beacons one to indulge in the vishes, meaning indulge in the bunch vishes, while something else dissuades one from indulging in them, saying, no, you must not. What is it that says no and what is it that says yes? So, the no part is no. Swami has told me to come to the temple. And the yes part is I want to go to the movies with my friends. What is that particular element that is saying yes and what is that particular element that's saying no? Nityan and Swami replied, it is the jiv or the soul that is saying no. You must not go to the movies. You must go to see Swami because Swami has called me. And the mind is that says yes. Meaning the mind is saying, no, we don't want to go see Swami. Let's go to the movies with my friends. This is the battle that's constantly occurring in our mind. Now this is just one example I'm showing you. But there's many, many examples like this occurring constantly all around us, not only in myself, but in yourself, in everyone on this earth. Only those who have realized God have no battle anymore, which is called Nirvikalp state, Nirvikalp Samadhi. They do not have any thoughts like this. But those who are still trying to attain that level, those have, they have to go through this battle. Now, Obviously, when one engages in battle or war, you want to win, right? You do not want to lose the war. Who would want to lose the war? No one would. Just like if you open up a business, you want to make profit. You do not want to lose your income or go into debt. In the same way, you want to win the battle. So Bhagwan himself is going to show us exactly how to do this. So, the first point is that the mind is saying yes, in, engage, and the, the jiu or the soul is saying no, do not engage. Now, Bhagwan is going to give us an example about Kurukshetra, Kuru but I'm going to give you an example similar to that for you to understand. During the 1940s, 
about 1940 to 1945, World War II occurred, which was called the Vishwa Youth, you can say. But the second one, there was two that occurred, one in the 1930s and one in the 1940s. Now, I'm talking about the second one. In World War II, there was two sides. Germany, Adolf Hitler, Nazis, and second, the United States. Now, each side had allies, meaning they had many, many countries supporting them, helping them out. Germany had, Russia, Japan, various other countries, and the United States had United Kingdom and other smaller countries. Now, I want you to think, the United States is the Jew or the soul, and Germany, which is the bad side, which is against everything that the United States believes in, is the mind. This is for you to make it easier for you to understand this concept that Bhagwan is showing us. That's why I'm using the World War II example so it can fit. Now, Germany has guns, bombs, uh, chains, various kinds of weapons. On the other hand, the United States also has guns, tanks, atom bombs, everything. They both have weapons. Now, when they're fighting and engaging, on one side, many get wounded and killed, and on the other side, many get wounded and killed. In the same way, Bhagwan is saying in the Vachnamrut that one's mind, I'm going to read the exact words, in the person's antakaran, meaning mind, are the forms of the kusangis. Kusangis meaning evil people or Germany. Think of Germany. When kusangi comes, think of Germany. Standing armed with their weapons, the panchvishes, as well as the form of sun, standing armed with the weapons in the form of words such as God is satya, the world is perishable, and the vishes are false. Meaning, the sun is the United States, which represents good, which represents not to engage in these vishes, not to indulge in good materialistic pleasures, to stay away from that. The sun, when engaging with them, when we encounter the sun, what kind of words do they tell us? Bhagwan is true. The world is false. The world is perishable. And the vishes are false, meaning materialism is false. A mutual conflict thus exists between these two sets of words, meaning the words of Germany and the words of the United States, both of them collide and they battle. Now, Bhagwan is saying that when the force of the Kusangis prevails, meaning when the force of the Nazis, Germany prevails, a desire to indulge in the vishes arises. Meaning, a desire to engage in going to the movies, eating outside food, all arises in our mind. We want to do it more and more. When the force of the sant prevails, the desires to indulge in the vishes disappear. Meaning, when we engage with santos and we listen to their talks, over there, we do not have any thoughts of going outside, or eating outside food. If we do have thoughts, it's going to be here. I want to eat prasad downstairs in the cafeteria. But we do not feel that let us go outside to Dunkin' Donuts or any other food place to eat. Now, in the same way, when these two battles are occurring, there's many people getting killed on both sides. In the same way, when they're using the weapons, when one side is using the weapons, they're killing the other side. When this side is using the weapons, they're killing the other side. Both of this is occurring in our minds. We might not recognize it because we don't have that form of awareness yet, but this is a constant battle that is occurring in everyone. Those who associate with saints. This is not for anyone who does not practice religion or does not associate with saints because 
Those who are in the outside world, they do not ever get thoughts of, I do not want to do this. Whenever they see something good, yes, let us go and do it. There is no no, because they have not associated with any saints. Now, Bhagwan is telling us, I'm going to read a little bit more. The Kusangis residing within and those residing externally are both one. This is now, Bhagwan is going to talk about association, who you're going to associate, associate with. Also, the Sant residing within and one residing externally are both one. Now, the force of the internal Kusangis increases with the nurturing of external Kusangis. In the same way, the force of the sun within increases with the nurturing of the sun residing externally. Therefore, by avoiding the company of external Kusangis and by keeping the company of only saints residing externally, the forces of Kusangis decrease and the force of Santos increase. Bhagwan saying that whoever you associate with outside that is going to come right inside of your mind. Now, all of you go to high school or college or even middle school. And there you see many, many people. Some people that are very proper, polite, and do the right thing at the right time. Other people, you know that they drink alcohol or they go to parties or they associate with bad people and do drugs. Now, if you even talk with them, if you even associate with them, then that is going to come inside. And then you will feel like indulging. Now, Bhagwan is saying, be aware of who you associate with. On the other hand, if you associate with the son, but not an ordinary son, a son who follows Bhagwan's words, a son who has dharma, bhakti, gnan, vairagya, such a son, by talking with him, by associating with him, you can automatically receive such kind of power, ammunition, that those vishes or those thoughts of engaging in bad things completely become eradicated. I want to tell you a quick story. In the time of Sri Maharaj, there was a little small boy named Shalok Bhagi. Now this boy, his farmer or his father was a farmer by nature, by occupation. And he grew many, many crops and vegetables and he especially was known for growing and selling his watermelons. So, one day, Shalok Bhagi was a devotee of Bhagwan Swami Nair. So he had a thought that I want to take a melon and offer it to Sriji Maharaj when it ripens. So Shaluk Bhagi waited some time and then the melon ripened. So he took the melon and he started his way to Vartal. Sriji Maharaj was residing in Vartal at that time. Now Shaluk Bhagi was no more than 12 years old and he was on his journey going to Vartal. While he was carrying that ripe melon, the smell of the melon was so nice that he had a thought in his mind that I want to take some, cut it into pieces and eat some melon. He had this thought. Right away after that, another thought arose: that no, this is for Bhagwan. I have waited for this time so it ripened and I have taken it and I want to offer it to Sri Maharaj. Battle number one. Win. Because, why? The thought that arise that I want to eat this melon was the Kusangi. But since Shaluk Bhagi associated with saints and engaged himself with saints, the thought the other thought reside, no, this is for Bhagwan. Due to that, that thought was overcome by the thought of eating. So he won that battle. Continuing on, he walked further and further. Again, his mind, this melon is so nice. The weather is so hot outside. And this melon would really, really hydrate me if I ate this right now. He had a thought of eating it again. 
he thought that when Bhagwan is there residing in Vartal, there is many, many rich people who offer him jewelry, nice clothing, nice foods, and this melon. That is, this is nothing compared to the devotees who spend money for Bhagwan, give Bhagwan gold coins, gems, everything. So why not just take small piece and eat a little bit? He had this thought again. But then right away again, he had another thought that this is for Bhagwan. I have waited again and this I offered to Bhagwan so I cannot eat this. All the way on his journey from where he was to Vartal, he battled with his mind, but he did not lose. He won each and every battle. So when he came to Vartal, Sri Maharaj saw him and Sri Maharaj is Antaryami, so he knew what he was going through. So Bhagwan called him and said, come, come. So the boy came running and offered the watermelon to Bhagwan. Bhagwan himself cut it into pieces, took some for himself and offered it to all the devotees. The devotees became pleased and Bhagwan became pleased. But Bhagwan became so pleased that he gave Shaluk Bhagi five kilograms of saka or crystallized sugar as a gift. Now, the moral of this story is that Shaluk Bhagi battled with his mind throughout the journey, but he did not lose. Why did he not lose? Because he had firm association with Santo. He associated with Santo constantly. Due to that, due to that, he did not lose. If he did not associate with any Santos, then he would have lost automatically. He wouldn't even have to, had a thought of offering this watermelon to Bhagwan. So Shaluk Bhagi won his battle, and due to that, Bhagwan became pleased. In the same exact form, in the same exact way, when we start to associate with the Ekantik Sadpurush through our mind, speech, and our deeds, our karma, then automatically those thoughts that are occurring in our mind disappear. Meaning, the war that has been going on constantly in our mind throughout these years, if you're 20 years old, then yes, 20 years you've been battling. For 30 years you've been battling. But if you associate with such an ekantik satpurush, and you, by heart, accept his words, then no more battle will be left for you. You'll win all your battles, and in the end, just like how the United States beat Germany in the same way, your soul will defeat your mind, and your mind will not be able to disturb you anymore. In Gandhara Middle Chapter 13th Vachramrut, Sri Jimard says, that only by an Ekantik Satpurush one can understand the words of his scriptures. Just by mere reading, one cannot understand the words of the scriptures. In the same exact way, if one associates with such a true Ekantik saint, then one will be able to defeat one's mind. And when one defeats one's mind, one has defeated the world. In Sarampur first chapter, Bhagwan says, that one who has defeated one's mind has defeated the whole world or has conquered the whole world. So, if you want to conquer not only the world, but if you want to conquer the heart of Sri Ji Maharaj, his saints and devotees, then associate with such a saint who can help you in conquering your mind. Saying this, please practice this way of devotion to get closer to Bhagwan, but the best method to do so is association with Ekantik Satpurush. Puja Guruji is such a saint that he is on such a high spiritual level, yet we do not know. But by keeping faith in his words, we will definitely get the fruits, maybe not right now, but in the future. Saying this, my humble Jai Swaminarayan.
ಶ್ರೀಪತಿಂ ಶ್ರೀಧರ ಸರ್ವೇಶ್ವರ ಭಕ್ತಿಧರ್ಮಾರ್ಪಣ ವಾಸುದೇವ ಹರೇ ಮಾಧವ ಕೇಶವಂ ಕಾಂಡಂ ಕಾ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನಾರಾಯಣ ನೀಲಕಂಠಂ ಭಜೆ ಹರಿಕೃಷ್ಣ ಮಾರಾಯ